if it's not true for the lighter skin, if the lighter skin doesn't have to put a, a disclaimer <laughs> on the front of, of their nation. Okay. Um, I'm Dominican, but I'm Afro Dominican. If the light skin people don't have to say I'm Dominican, but I'm Euro Dominican, that's colorism. What's going on? I'm Anoki the one back with another video. And this video is all about how blackness is a real estate strategy, how pan-Africanism is mental gentrification. And you're seeing it more in different countries in Latin America, Afro-Mexicans, Afro-Venezuelans, Afro-Cuban, Afro-everything, Afro, 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 okay? Um, and the purpose is to mentally gentrify the next generation is to create paper genocide for it's about colorism it's about paper genocide of the people who are darker than a brown paper bag okay it's all about colorism and this is how you know it is not about facts it's not about truth it's not about um records it's not about slavery when slave ships came because blah, 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 blah. if this was real if it was really about where people's people came from like for example um dominican dominicans now there's afro dominican right and dominicans more than anybody have been pushing back on um, this whole notion that because they're darker skinned and cause they have kinkier hair, that they are now Afro Latino. Now they're black. Okay. When they come to America, now they're black, right? They've been pushing back. Why? Why? And why do I agree with the pushback? I agree with the pushback because it's colorism because the light skinned people, hello, the light skinned Dominicans, the light skinned Cubans, the light skinned Venezuelans, the light skins, anything, Mexicans or whatever. If you're lighter than a brown paper bag, okay, nobody, you don't have to say that you're Euro Cuban. You don't have to say you're Euro, Euro Dominican. You're not French Dominican. You're not French Haitian. You're not so if, if, if it's not true for the lighter skin, if the lighter skin doesn't have to put a, a disclaimer <laughs> on the front of, of their nation. Okay. Um, I'm Dominican, but I'm Afro Dominican. If the light skin people don't have to say I'm Dominican, but I'm Euro Dominican, that's colorism. Okay. There's a problem there. Right. And this is how like black, black Americans, and this is why, oh, you're denying your blackness. Blah, blah, blah. Be quiet. Because first of all, you don't even know who you are. Okay. You're, you're calling yourself African-American, but you have no documentation of your Africanness. All you have is some, that somebody just told you, oh, the slave ship came over here one day and that's where your people was from. And they can't tell you what slave ship it was. They can't tell you the name of the slave ship. They, they don't have any evidence of the slave ship right now. Okay. And trust me, they have evidence of ships from further back than uh, the so-called transatlantic slave uh, trade. Okay. They can't tell you what tribe you came from. They can't tell you specifically what country your ancestors came from and they cannot track it. Okay. So y'all black Americans, you black Americans who still don't know who you people are. You need to be quiet with that. You need to be quiet with that because they gentrified our stuff with that because we have uh, had paper genocide from the same Afro stuff. Right. And the Afro movement was created by people in real estate, the Renaissance movement. And I, I read this in a large document and I want y'all to go and research this because it's very hard to find. Okay. Even for me to go back and find it for myself has been very hard to find the the, the, the Harlem Renaissance largely, and I was, I've said this before, New York is the hotbed for eugenics experimentation. That is where the, um, um, experimentation with the coronavirus, when they were simulating the coronavirus, it was happening in New York, uh, LGBT community where they're coming up with all these ideas about nine non-binary and all this other crap that started in New York uh, it is a hotbed for eugenics experimentation. And what is eugenics? Eugenics is basically, uh, a movement that, that, that the Nazis 
were were impressed by and they model themselves after okay and it is basically a form of brainwashing to uh, have the communities that they want that the 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 lower people the imbeciles if you say it doesn't matter if you're black white chinese they consider you imbeciles because they have elite things that you have to be you have to uh have a college degree and even if you have a college degree if you don't have the right kind of blood if you don't have blonde hair blue eyes all this other stuff then you are considered an imbecile you're lower on the totem pole and you don't need to procreate and you need to disappear off the planet okay and they have sociology they have history they have uh uh the medical industry they have everything everything in college that you learn was created by eugenics eugenicists okay and these elite colleges uh harvard and all this stuff this is a hot biz where they created all this stuff and then they pushed it out okay so the harlem renaissance was an experiment it was a um basically this big time real estate man funded a program that created the Harlem uh, Renaissance. So basically, he was funding dark skinned artists, I would say copper colored artists. He wanted them to make Afrocentric art, whether it was movies, whether it was paintings, whether it was sculptures. He was funding Afrocentric, Afrocentric. Uh, uh, writings and all kinds of things. Okay, this is a Harlem Renaissance. Okay, he funded it specifically, not just any kind of art, Afrocentric. Before then, the people out there weren't Afrocentric at all, but he funded them. To, <laughs> it's so crazy. He funded specific. I want y'all to make all this artwork because when at the end of the day, if you go to a high school right now, photography as well if you go to high school or, or or junior high and you go into history class what they're going to present to you is a book with a bunch of words in it and paintings and pictures okay and they're going to tell you what the pictures and the paintings mean right and a lot of these paint uh, paintings and pictures happened during the harlem renaissance this is shaping our mind our imagination is very powerful right you see this all the time with memes it's the same thing as how we were taught in school we were taught to be brainwashed right so you have a picture and people just have a little text underneath underneath it and you think you know what's going on they had this with the uh, black friday situation they had uh um these black people in chains and all this other stuff and talking about this is the first black friday in 1908 slavery ended in 1865 okay <laughs> stop playing right and, and 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 back then you couldn't even take pictures like that so what are you really looking at pictures of are you sure that when you see a black person bent over picking cotton are you sure that that's not their land that they're picking cotton on how do you know that's not their land? Because my great grandparents picked cotton on their own land. Okay, hello? So if somebody snapped a picture in the 60s or the 50s or during the Harlem Renaissance of my ancestors at that time in Mississippi picking cotton, and now that same picture, that person who took the picture is dead and gone, and now that same picture is in your history book, and, and you see uh, black slaves picking cotton. That's it they don't know their names right so it was a real estate strategy right and i've understood this deeply for a while but it really opened my eyes when i saw in my own ancestry now this is a distant ancestor like um I don't even, it's like a sister of a cousin of a husband of a, blah, 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 blah. it's not like a direct, okay, this is my 10th great grandfather, or this is my 10th cousin, five generations back. It's not like that. Okay. But I saw this story from my genealogy and I thought it was very interesting. I have ancestors. Okay. Like I said, distant that owned, they were the founders of Madisonville, Louisiana, the entire city or town of madisonville louisiana and the way they got it was and this was in i think the 1700s okay this is how far back i've been able to go in my own genealogy they got a spanish land grant 
Okay, they were already in the United States. They got they moved to Louisiana and got a Spanish land grant because obviously the Spanish were ruling over wherever they was at. Got a Spanish land grant, got a whole bunch of land. They founded Madisonville, Louisiana. They got and they bought the land from a free woman of color. Okay, in Louisiana, and I'll do a whole video about free people of color. In Louisiana, they had free people of color, a large population of free people of color and they were recognized and respected as a different um as a ethnic group okay there's black there's white or they were negro so negro meant slaves dark-skinned slaves or might even be white slaves okay because all you gotta have is one blop, uh, drop of negro blood to be considered a negro okay but at the same time there's free people of color right so that was going on in Louisiana. So they were free people of color. They bought the land from a free woman of color. And she also sold them slaves. Told y'all about this in a video back. There, are, there was a large population of free people of color who owned slaves. Okay. They were dark to light skinned people. Okay. So, um, these people owned all this land owned the whole town, founded, gave it the name, Madisonville, named it after the, 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 um, president at the, at the time. Okay. So this kind of shows you that there was patriotism within people of color to this country way back then. I have ancestors who have been in every war that you can think of on American soil. It doesn't matter if they say, Oh, blacks weren't allowed or da, 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 da. guess what? They don't tell you about free people of color. That's just a way to discredit all the people who look like me who's fighting. They want us to believe that we wasn't doing nothing but slavery up until 1865. And then they give us a, a, another regurgitated history as well. And they just wipe out all, uh, just a whole bunch of history. Okay. But anyway, so with this family, two generations, of course, this, this person who founded Madisonville, Louisiana, they pass it on to the children, of course, right? Two generations of passing it on, <clears throat> the Civil War happens, and then there's Reconstruction. When Reconstruction was happening, the uh, English, <clears throat> the English came down and now they were, they, and I'm not going to say the Americans now, they're not English, but they had that same energy. Okay. The Americans came down with their racial beliefs, their own racial systems, which is basically everybody was a daggone slave pretty much until it, it still is to the day. Most people don't own land and property in up North. A lot of times they're renting from corporations. Okay. So in the South, there was a lot more autonomy, a lot more self-sufficientness. There's a lot more entrepreneur till this day. It's much easier to be an entrepreneur in the South of America. Okay. Now, when reconstruction happened, free people of color were no longer free people of color. Now they're Negroes, right? When, when so-called slavery ended, because I don't want to go into this, but that had been a battle for a long time and it was already ending regardless of whether he's going to have the civil war or not it was already ending it's already on its way out it wasn't working anymore okay um because people they were revolting in louisiana specifically so that happened so now my ancestors who had who owned madisonville louisiana they were no longer free people of color color they were now negroes and by being negro they were subject to having their land taken because Negroes were not full human beings and have the full rights of everybody else. Right. You see that? You see how that, you see how crazy that is? We've been told that our, uh, the people that look like me had a terrible, terrible lot all the way up until, um, you know, they let us free. And then, um, you know, it was still terrible and it was just terrible, 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 terrible. Right. We don't even know where the real racism is. Okay. So, there was a lawyer okay, because they wanted these people's land. They wanted it Madisonville, Louisiana. There was a lawyer and I saw the court case. Okay. In the documentation, this, my ancestor from the 1800s 
spoke better English than me right now. I was just like, whoa. Like the way he articulated that was perfect, right? And it's in a history book somewhere. So and the documenta uh, documentation was in my ancestry.com, popped up with their names and all that stuff. So this lawyer tried to bring my ancestors to court to prove that they had in the uh, a negroid blood right and their proof that they had negro blood was that their ancestors were considered free people of color okay or people of color in general and now because their ancestors were uh free people of color and they changed what what a a, a dark-skinned basically a dark-skinned person is now now they're negro now you should be considered a Negro so we can then take your land. Okay, do you see how that makes sense? And do you see why there's such an incentive for us to be black? Such an incentive for us to be Negroes? Why there's such outrage for people like me who have actually done their their genealogy and can prove that I am Choctaw, that I'm Cherokee, that I'm uh, Louisiana Creole, which is an actual ethnic group, an actual ethnicity. People don't know that red bone is a real ethnicity. Okay, there were a group of people who considered themselves the red bones. They had a whole community. They had a, a, a different makeup. They have different generational curses. Cajuns, that is an ethnicity. Cajun is an ethnicity. There are different generational curses that are in Cajun blood that are not in other people. And if you wanna break generational curses, you have to be able to identify what your people actually were. You can't be black about it. They can't be blacked out. They can't be whited out. How can you break a, gene a, a, a generational curse if you don't even know what your people were? You don't even know your own genealogy, your own nationality, okay? We gotta be clear. And this, this is why it's so important because when you understand that Pan-Africanism is mental gentrification, then you realize that all this yelling and, and this ain't my country i'm from africa i didn't come here on my own my ancestors didn't choose to be here we're just here uh, you're talking all this and you know good and well it's your grandma got land she's been struggling to pay the taxes or, or your, your, your great grandparents left the land they've been struggling to pay the taxes you don't want to pay taxes because you're too black you're too african to want to have land in this country because this country is so terrible even though everybody on earth trying to be here but you because you've been mentally gentrified okay and then you want to get upset then you want to get upset then you want to get upset and also it's much easier for them to tear down your house and build a road. It's much easier for them to push you out and hike up the price and do all kinds of different things when you are considered a black person because a black person is not an actual person that is just a product, property of the corporation of the United States of America, okay? If you have a real nationality, okay? Like for example, Choctaw Nation, you have an actual nationality in this country, I'm Choctaw. Okay, I have Choctaw, that's a nationality. Cherokee's nationality. Louisiana Creole is a nationality. You say, oh, you can't check Louisiana Creole in the U.S. Census. Who gives a goddamn? The U.S. Census don't have nothing to do with nationality. Okay, that's to count you and all this other stuff. But as far as nationality, okay, when you register and have membership in a particular nation, then you have different rights than a black person or a white person, okay? If you are uh, a white person, but you're clear that you're, you have Irish, you're Irish, you have nationality, you're American nationality for one, you're American citizen, you're American person, okay? But you people come from Ireland, from an actual place, not white, from an actual place, not black, okay? My people are Mississippi Choctaw. They're Choctaw and Mississippi Choctaw. Okay, the Louisiana Creole. Okay, they are Choctaw from New Orleans, from Louisiana. The Cajun. Okay, these are ethnic groups. These are nationalities. And when you do the research of those people, then you get clear, and you are solidified as a human being within this United States corporation. So people can't just do any kind of thing with you. Okay, when you're blacked out. They can shoot you in any kind of way. The police, 
when you're blacked out, they can shoot you all uh, any kind of way with your property because you're not a real human. So they can just take it. They can just hike up the price. They can say any kind of thing. You have no real representation in court. When it goes to the prison system, they can say any kind of thing. As a Choctaw, as a member of the Choctaw Nation, they have their own representation. They have their own defense programs. Okay, so I can call on Choctaw, even though their race is as hell. I know that. I'm very aware. Okay, but guess what? I have the membership, so you, hey, I have rights that you cannot deny. I have the records to prove. Okay, okay. So there are laws and regardless of whether you are aware of what black means in the law or whether you believe it or not, or whether you know it or not, it still matters. It's still important. Okay. So if you want to be a human being, you need to know what your nationality is. You need to know what your ethnicity is as a human person on earth. Okay. That's very important. Okay. I've said this over and over over and over again. But I just wanted to share that story with you. So you know what Pan-Africanism is, okay? It's mental gentrification, okay? You need to know for yourself through genealogy, through your ancestors and not be subject to colorism because you are darker than a brown paper bag or because you have kinkier hair than the Indians that you see all over the place because you don't look like Pocahontas, okay? Because you don't look like the conquistadors the Spaniards who came over to Latin America and all this other stuff. Because you want to call yourself Afro everything, but they ain't got to call themselves Euro nothing. Okay, until they until they calling people Euro Latino, <laughs> until they, you're, that makes no, absolutely, European, European Latin, Latin don't make sense. Nobody speaks Latin no more. It's a dead language. Okay, it's a dead language. This is a dead language, okay? They're trying to play y'all. Y'all need to be clear on your nationality. You need to do your genealogy. I don't care who you are, whether you're Asian, you're black, you're white, you're whatever you call yourself. Do your genealogy, know who your people are because it's very important and you need to respect your people, all right? Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. If you've done the research, if you've done the work, if you know what your uh, nationality is and your ethnicity. I personally am very impressed when people that look like me know their nationality, know their ethnicity, and they're very clear on that. A, a lot of people in the United States are very, the U.S., especially black people, and that is by design because for generations they have shamed us for claiming anything but with the, the box that they want to put us in. Okay, they shame Creoles. You're not Creole, you're just black. No, they're Creole. Creole people have a language, hello? Do you have a, a language? Is there a black language? Y'all wanna talk about some damn Ebonics? No. Okay, Creole people have a language. They have a, a specific, and specifically Louisiana Creole. They have a specific story, a specific journey in American history. They did very specific things. Cajun people did very specific things in history. You need to know what the different ethnic groups of your state is and respect people for knowing who and what they are. If somebody is Jamaican, I respect that you're Jamaican. If you say I'm not black, I'm Jamaican, I respect that you're Jamaican. That's where you're from. Okay, that tells me something about you. That tells me about the kind of food you're eating. That tells me what kind of uh, patois you got. Well, uh, some history. Okay, if you come to this country, you might come from Haiti or something. If you just bust out talking about you, black. Like, oh, okay. No more questions. That completely erases your history. Realize that. All right. See y'all in the next video.